I'm John Walsh, and I'm here with my friend Scott Davis, and you're watching The Missing. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Missing. I'm your host, Scott Davis, and I want to say thank you so much for joining us. Now, before we get into this week's episode of The Missing, I want to cover our last episode when we featured the case of Journey and Trust Everett, a brother and sister that was abducted out of the state of Florida by their non-custodial mother. They were located safely in the state of Oregon. When a social worker did not quite believe the details in the story the mother was telling, Curiosity got the best of her, and she did some research on the internet. Along with other organizations that presented the information on Journey and Trust's case, she watched this episode of The Missing that featured Journey and Trust. She came to the determination that these are the children that were missing, and she called authorities. The children recovered safely and returned home to their father, and the mother was taken into custody. It just proves that having team members such as yourself out there in the field, helping us locate these children really works. I wanna say thank you to that social worker and to you, our viewers, who viewed that information and reviewing this information in this week's episode and helping us locate these children and bringing them home safely. Now in this week's episode, we're gonna be covering the cases of two missing girls, one missing out of Parsons, Tennessee, and the other missing out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. You may be familiar with the cases, that of Holly Bobo and PFC Kelly Bordeaux. So let's don't waste any more time. Let's get right into the details of these cases. First case I'd like to bring your attention is that of Holly Bobo. UT student studying to be a nurse was abducted from her front porch and taken into the woods by a man dressed in hunting camouflage. If you will, let's work together and review this information in Holly's case. By looking at the aerial map, the first thing that you'll notice is that it is a very rural area surrounded by woods and some area of water and ponds. During the search for Holly, many different types of searches were used. One that proves the most effective and to cover the most ground is a helicopter or aerial search. This was activated in conjunction with land and water searches as well. I reviewed some of the footage taken from the air just to understand the massive land mass in the area that was to be covered by the search and rescue efforts. Looking at Holly, she was described as five foot three, 110 pounds, with blonde hair and blue eyes. When she was last seen in her residence, she was wearing a pink shirt with light colored jeans. In addition to the law enforcement agencies that were involved in the search and investigation of Holly's whereabouts, hundreds of volunteers showed in force not only to look for Holly, but to also be there to offer support to the family. They covered miles of land, some inch by inch, looking for any clues to Holly's whereabouts. As I reviewed the information, I found myself looking at the pictures of Holly and as I mentioned earlier, Holly seems to be a very happy and well-liked and well-rounded person who is full of life and potential. Then, looking at the location that she went missing from, seemed like a very nice home in a secluded area in Darden, Tennessee. The search and investigation continues in Holly's case and the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, in conjunction with local, state, and federal agencies, work together not only on the original search, but continues to follow up on leads to retrieve any information in Holly's disappearance and her location. Now put this information together so you, not only our viewers, but our team members here on The Missing, can review this information and possibly know something in Holly's disappearance that you may be able to share or have clues into her whereabouts. Thank you for reviewing the details in Holly's case. Hopefully you may have some information that you can share with authorities to help locate her. If you wish to offer some support for the family, you can go to a Facebook page called Holly Bobo Prayers. There you can join an online community to share your concerns in the disappearance of Holly Bobo. The next case I'd like to bring to your attention is that of Kelly Bordeaux, PFC with the U.S. Army. She was last seen in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Let's take the time to review the information in her case, look at her photographs, 
and hopefully you can help us locate her and bring her home safely. We're going to Fayetteville, North Carolina, where officials are searching for a 23-year-old missing female. On April 14, 2012, Kelly Bordeaux was last seen at Froggy Bottoms, a local bar located just a few miles from her apartment. It was reported around 1.20 a.m. that Kelly had received a ride from a man who is an employee of the bar. Law enforcement officials believe that Kelly did not make it back to her apartment after leaving the Froggy Bottoms location. It has been reported that an investigation of her apartment did not turn up anything that was out of place or even appeared that she or anyone else may have entered her apartment the night that Kelly went missing. Kelly is enlisted in the U.S. Army with the rank of Private First Class as a medic and is stationed at Fort Bragg in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Reports state that she was proud of her military status and was dedicated to her career. The days following her disappearance, volunteers and law enforcement officials conducted multiple searches by land, air, and water, covering a large area looking for any information into Kelly's whereabouts or for any evidence of her disappearance. Kelly is described as five feet, one inches tall, weighing 102 pounds. She has blonde hair and brown eyes. The night she was reported missing, she was wearing a pink top and black shorts. Now, according to officials, you're looking at the last picture of Kelly that she took of herself just before going out the night that she was reported missing. If you'll notice, she was wearing the reported pink shirt and black shorts. You can help us locate Kelly by sharing any information that you may have about her whereabouts or her disappearance. You can contact the Fayetteville Police Department at 910-587-3200. For more information and pictures of Kelly, you could visit our website at www.themissing.tv. There, you can review this information as well as find links to other reports of her disappearance. Thank you so much for reviewing the information in Kelly's case. Hopefully, you know some details that you can share with authorities to help locate her and bring her home. Now, for more information on Kelly, you can visit a website that's been set up on her behalf at www.findkelly.com. Well, everyone, that brings it close to another episode of The Missing. I'd like to say thank you so much for joining us and reviewing the cases that we presented to you in this episode. As always, keep your children educated, keep them protected, and continue to watch The Missing. I'm your host, Scott Davis. God bless.